and welcome to our community preview of Bayer Leverkusen against West Ham United. The first time we've ever done something like this. But that's a lie. We used to do something similar. I did something similar in Olongo when Fan Hub sponsored us. But they've disappeared then, so scrap that show. But uh, earlier on the week, a few people said, why don't you have a community preview? But 10 people said that's a good idea. Don't say we don't listen to the minority. That accusation will not be flung around here. But anyway, if you're joining us live, get your thoughts into the live chat. It can be the team that you want to see tonight, how you're feeling ahead of the game. Get your thoughts in. Gonzo, how is oneself? I'm all right. I'm wondering what is the difference between a community preview and a, and a regular sort of video where we where we sit down and, and, and talk about stuff with the with the live chat open? Because it's about the game. When, when do we ever sit down with... Oh, and normally the videos aren't about the game. When do we ever sit down with a live chat open? In the build-up show? That, that, yeah, but we're not doing a build-up show tonight. No, in the review. We don't interrupt with a live chat. Oh, all right. Okay, fine. Fine. I'm absolutely fine. How are you? Yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited. I've got absolutely no nerves. doesn't mean I'm confident. I just... I think it's because... And this this won't be too popular, but hopefully it makes sense. If you're going to get knocked out, there's certain teams that it's acceptable to get knocked out against, and certain teams there is not. Getting knocked out against Bristol City in the FA Cup, unacceptable. unacceptable. Getting knocked out by Bayer Leverkusen in the Europa League, there's a good chance that we've played well and they've just been better than us. Because I think they are a better team. They're coming in in better form. They don't have to worry about the league per se. They, they, can, they can lose on Sunday and still go on and win the Bundesliga title. Um, I think we're going to have to play fantastic and hope that Bayer Leverkusen are a little bit not at it in order for us to win. And we've also got no Alvarez, no Ariola, no Jared Bowen. So it's already a difficult time, made even more difficult. So I think the pressure's on them. I think they're favourites. I think there's no expectation on us. If we can get the game back to the London Stadium where it's winnable, I'll be happy with that. So, yeah, I'm just really excited for tonight, actually, Gonzo. Look, I, I think tonight... A draw would be a miracle result. Yeah, a draw would be fantastic. If even if we get a draw, and I think he'll play for one, it's going to it would actually make people confident. The build up, if we got a draw the next week, you know, okay, we've got a league game, but the next week would be incredible. People would start getting confidence about it. I really do think that. Um I think even a one nil loss, people are gonna you know start thinking that what what we what would be horrendous would be a 3 0 loss because yeah. we ain't coming back from that. Yeah. Um, we're not good at well, I think we can score four goals, but you know, uh, can we score four goals against Leverkusen and defend well? No, we ain't coming back um from that. So um they they can finish it up. They they really can. And and you know, something we were just discussing on, on the Patreon breakfast a minute ago, it's that mindset, that human mindset. If we can get them to a point where their focus is now on on the uh, Bundesliga title. Then I think it gives us a little bit of an edge, not not above them, but an edge on, on what we have in our mindset now. As Alonso can say that he is absolutely concentrating on this rather than the weekend. I think he might be. I think he he might be that professional. But it's going to be the fans and of course the players themselves are going to be. Looking at that glory, that's a massive glory to beat Bayern Munich to the Bundesliga title. And I, and I just, but I think it's harder for that mentality to shift again afterwards. You know, he he's going to have to keep. It, it's going to be like a kid um, in the in the um, in the K car at the supermarket. You have to get no, no, come back. You have to keep dragging them back. He's have to be doing that with their players. So he's going to be saying, you know, Europa League, Europa League, and the players are going to be, oh, what about the uh, the Bundesliga? No, 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 come back here. Don't worry about that. There you go. Focus. So I think there's going to be a bit of that going on, um, even if it's subliminally. There'll be more of that going on afterwards. So, um, yeah, we, we need to stay in the tie. This is the main thing. Stay in the tie. It will be bloody depressing if we get thrashed. Right, let's see what we're all saying in the live chat. Foxes says, I feel a park the bus coming on. Ian's just watched my show with Anton Fernand on Patreon. That's got him excited. Uh, pleased mm -hmm. to be of service, Ian. Glad you enjoyed it. Thank you for tuning in. Um, Andy is buzzing for the game. Decanio says it's a triple decker bus. Here we go, or three buses. I'm not sure which one, but mm. there's big buses. Three buses. buses. Three buses will do it. Um, ben says carbon copy of Sevilla for him. I've got a feeling that's what we're going to see. One nil loss, and then we we'll beat them at our place and go through, and it may go to extra time as well. Are you predicting that? Yeah. That we lose this game one nil. One. We lose we this lose game two one, one, but we beat and, them and, one we, and we beat three. them in the return leg. Yeah. To go to is that wow, that's good. I'll yeah. tell you what, 
People be liking that. Feeling in my belly. Just oh. like West Ham 2 Wolves 1 had a feeling in my belly. I, I said that too. <laughs> yeah. Somebody, somebody in the review was complaining we never get score predictions, right? I said, we literally got the last one right. It says, so, oh, doesn't that always happen after we get it right? I think someone might be trolling yeah. us. I think they say you never get one right. Hold on, we just did. Yeah, yeah. And also, yeah. it's a bit of fun. It's not that serious. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And you anyway, do have to watch every video to make that claim. Yeah. If you're going to say that, you never get anything right. You better have an encyclopedic knowledge of everything. Um, Adrian said was a bit worried about Bayern Munich's performance against Arsenal, but now feeling quietly confident, obviously, in regards to the fact that Bayern Leverkusen comfortably defeated Bayern Munich not too long ago. Now Bayern Munich rocked up to the Emirates and drew 2-2. Chris said defensively, uh, parking the bus doesn't work anymore for us. Defensively, we're like a colony. We're awful. We're terrible at defending. Ben said... Get away with a 1-0 loss and it's ours. Dan's not confident. Same lineup as second half against Wolves, I think. I uh, Yusuf, is. Yusuf says the team I want would never happen. Well, let's know the team you want, Yusuf. This is your preview, not what Moyes is going to do. Look at that. We'll deal with that at 7 o'clock. What do you want to see? Get involved. Breezy's saying it's been a while. See, told you. We don't do these videos. <laughs> there, you <go. laughs> there you go. Hey, Colin, we just bought tickets for hey. the Colour Factory, so he's going to see us later. We'll, we'll see tell you later. about that. In a we'll second, see you once I get through the comments, we'll tell you about the Colour Factory and how you can join myself and Gonzo this evening. Andy would take a 1-0 loss to set it up for the home leg next week. De Canio said, this is not the Arsenal's Invincibles we're playing, unbeaten in an inferior league. Chris would like to see Emerson playing as a attacker tonight on the left-hand side. Danger is very nervous for this one. Let's go, Mr. T. Great There you go. Mr. T. Um, Ash said, just make sure we're in it for the second leg. If we lose the game by a goal, then I'd take that, to be honest. Mark is buzzing for this one. He's confident that we're going to turn up. James says we play well as the underdogs. Infinitely says we need to be with a single goal going into next week's leg, similar to the Sevilla game. Hope we can have a similar level of atmosphere. Paul's bricking it. He hopes we're still in it for the second leg. Terence says... He's looking forward to watching the game. He reckons 2-2, while Sai reckons 1-0. Razor says Antonio will play a big part, and he's not sure they've played many players quite like Mikhail Antonio. He's confident, Antonio. Very confident. Good. Hammerin said, me personally would play Antonio on the right in place of Bowen, and then Ings or Mubama up top. Megan says, is this a perfect David Moyes game? European football, defensive and holding tight. Not pretty, but I think he is the man for this game. He's got a good record. Oh, so you, you cannot, listen, you can say you don't like his football, you can say you don't like his press conferences. The last three years in Europe has it's been successful. There's, there's no, he, cruise, he cruises through the group stages, he gets to the later rounds, and he's even picked up a trophy. So, um, yeah, they, well, they are aware of it because um, Alonso alluded to it in his press conference. They are fully aware of West West Ham are viewed now on the continent as a as a pain in the ass European team, and and we are so yeah you know that's I'm clinging on to that. I think that's the only only way we win really. Mark says Moyes knows how this works now. Shut up shop tonight and keep damage down, and we go ten by an hour next week. I think this is a slight difference between the European games and the league games in the sense that the league games you don't get that return leg. It's over that ninety minutes. So yeah, Newcastle where you lose four three, that's it. You got no points. But if there was a second leg tonight, and you know what? I fancy us beating this Newcastle team. Actually, yes, we've messed it up, but take it back to the London Stadium and let's have a go. Sai says he's not a David Moyes fan. But he's perfect for this game. Um, Hammerin, who also who wanted Mikel Antonio on the right hand side, has gone on to say Antonio would do a job with Sufal over. Do we? Do we think? Side. Tell me, what do you think? Do you think he'll pick if he goes with that three at the back with the, with the wing backs? Do you think he'll pick Sufal tonight? I think he goes Johnson. I yeah, so do I. But I mean, he was it, Sufal was put forward. Sufal had a lot to say, you know. Um, so yeah, who, who knows? I, I would I would choose Johnson. Um. Carer says tonight is going to be a game of just keep the score as low as we can while trying to nick a goal on the break. Um, Yusuf said, I'm not going to lie, I'm pumped after the 300 speech. Excellent. Like it, Yusuf. Like it. Um, Duke said tonight is going to be a special night. I can see a surprise. Um, Andy said, I can feel a bet coming on. Lose tonight, win next week. Oh, I've got to do a bet for today, yeah. And um, Frankie, the host of the Colour Factory, it says Rise and Shine is leaving. There you go. There you go. We will be there tonight. 
Yeah, we've had a couple of little plugs for us there, building up to me promoting the event mm. once we get through the live chat. And mm. um, Billy is just putting in a nice motivational rousing. Like Come on, lads, let's nice do this. Nice one, Billy. And um, Butcher says four but one smash. Your big balls. Put your big balls. Um, says four one smashing coming up, lads. Going to be an epic. Well, I think he's going four one us. I thought it was four one leave accusing. He's got epic. big balls. Let's butcher. Um, Yusuf says he'd like to see Johnson Emerson playing wing back, three at the back, doing overlaps of the wingers, but the other flank cutting into the defensive midfield role when the other bombs forward. Oh, he's got a tactical mind, Yusuf. Um, Luke says zero work is going to get done today. I'd take mm. a one nil loss over a one nil win tonight. Think if we go defensive at home, we. Um, if we win one nil, psychology. Yusuf with the tactics. Luke with the psychology. I think we've got it sussed. Ru says got a feeling Mickey Caduce and could Paqueta are going to turn up and cause real problems. And um, hello, Lee. Thank you for joining us. And Terence, no, Bowen's not available. He's not even gone on the plane. He's back in London. Uh, Billy asking why he's so confident. I'm feeling a lot of optimism actually in the. Um, they, they are. It's nice. But do you know what? I, I just funny up to you. I, was, I said this in me in my video earlier. I, I, I don't want to look back, and maybe it's false confidence. And when people say, "Well, what, you know, what was it like if the, you know, in the build up to that quarter final, particularly if we're going out, and we're going out tonight to the Colour Factory." I don't want to look back and think, "Oh, well, you know, I wasn't really looking forward to it. I thought I knew we were going to lose." Blah blah blah. No, it's a quarter final. This is it. We don't get many of these. Well, actually, we get one every year, but. Usually, before that, we don't get many of these. You've got to look forward to them. You've got to enjoy it. And, and I think we should have a spring in our step. And they are a good team. They're a really good team. But we have also been here before. And, and you have the tendency to build some of these teams up. They are the darlings of Europe, right? We are the underdogs here. Um, but we do have some good players. Granted, a couple of them are not playing tonight. But we do have some really, really good players. We've got Brazil's number 10. He's, he's amazing. He's so good. Everyone wants him. It looks like Man City are going to get him. Um, that's got to count for something, right? You know, and, and he's not he's not the only one either. So, yeah, we, we have the ability to score against them. We definitely have the ability to score against them. Can we? Because uh, we can score a brilliant goal. We're capable of that. Can we keep a clean sheet? I don't know. But I think everyone's looking forward to it. And, and um, I certainly am. Yeah, definitely. Right, I'm going to promote the Colour Factory tonight. If you're in Germany, enjoy it. I hope it's a fantastic occasion for you. If you're not and you can get to Hackney Week, please do, because tonight we are co-hosting a live event. On one side of it, you've got the Hammers Chat side, which myself and Gonzo are doing our first ever live show for about half an hour. From about 7pm onwards, we'll be building up to the game with our usual build-up, but just in person, bringing it from the screens to the stage. So tonight, you can join us. Um, £20 per ticket or £15 if you're a patron. Please log into Patreon to get your discount code in order for you to obtain that £5 discount. Um, doors open at 5 p.m. this evening as well. But if you don't want to hear from myself and Gonzo, that's fine. There's general admission as well. So you can come in and it's just basically like a pub. There's a DJ, there's a West Ham fan, plays all the songs that we know to get us hyped for the game. Three big screens on the wall as well, where it's, you, you, everybody will see. We've been there before, myself and Gonzo hosted it for the Conference League final. No matter where you are in the venue, you get a fantastic view of the screen. The bars aren't busy. There's plenty of staff. You get served quickly. There's plenty of tables and chairs. There's really good food. It's a fantastic venue pre-match. So come and join us. And if you come to this one, if you come tonight, the link to get your ticket is in the description below. But if you come tonight, next week for the home game, um, it's just a pub. There's not an event as such. It's just a pub, a meeting place before the game. And it's only 10 minutes from the London Stadium. And it's probably quicker to get from Hackney Wick to the stadium than it is to go from Stratford to the stadium. Uh, it and is. And it's a, it's a one-minute walk from Hackney Wick Station. You come out of Hackney Wick Station and cross the road and you're at the Colour Factory. It's a one-minute walk from the station. Next week before the home game, they'll be opening up their doors. And if you attend tonight, you can get in free next week with your ticket. There'll be no entry fee next week. And should West Ham make the semi-finals, like a lot of you are predicting, we'll be doing something similar, Hammers Chat, for the semi-final away leg. And you'll be guaranteed a ticket and you'll also get a discount compared to those who do not attend this evening. Link in description below. Myself and Gonzo are looking forward to meeting as many of you there as possible this evening. So next time you see us, we'll be in London. Myself and Gonzo will be in Hackney Wick. Mm -hmm. um, a couple of people have asked if we're live streaming it. We're not. It's our first ever live show. Yes, so sorry. We can't stream it. It's our first ever live show. I'm nervous enough as it is about going on the stage for the first time in my life ever. Gonzo's done things like this before in previous work, but I haven't. Um, and that's just talking. Without worrying about equipment, Wi-Fi, etc., etc., it's, it's too complicated. 
Charlie will be doing the build-up show on YouTube as usual. So it's on YouTube. Nothing's missing, but me and Gons are missing. That's it. The, the show mm-hmm. will still go on. Uh, we might do a little bit of a vlog for today and put up on Patreon um, over the weekend or early next week as well, and you'll see clips from the, the live show. But um, Infinitely is coming, so Infinitely, we I shall see, see you later. this evening. Thank you very much for coming. Right then, let's see what the rest of you are saying. Uh, Jordan's saying, I hope we don't see a repeat of pre-season. I've completely ignored that, and I've seen a lot of people be like, why have you not mentioned pre-season? Because I don't care. It's a friendly. I'm, I don't. Yeah. Just like, right, if we beat Leverkusen 5-0 pre-season, I wouldn't be sitting here going, well, I think we're going to win with one 5-0 no, pre-season. No, no. Right? And it means nothing. It means absolutely nothing to me. I'm not arsed in the slightest. Um, don't, no, no, not having it. Uh, Frankie's saying we look very relaxed with a real focus on the pitch yesterday. Caduceus looked like he was licking his lips at the occasion. Antonio looked like he had that beast mode in his eyes. Um, Antoine Ferdinand, and believe it or not, I'm not actually plugging Patreon, but every now and again, we I speak to Antoine for a podcast on, on our Patreon. I did one yesterday, and he said he spoke to Antonio for a Sky Sports feature, uh, as well as Ben Johnson. And he didn't want to go into it too much because obviously the feature hadn't yet been aired on Sky Sports. But he basically said Antonio is pumped. He said Mikel Antonio is like different beast. He's 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 like just foaming at the mouth, ready to get rocking and rolling tonight. So Anton said when he was listening to Mikel Antonio, it got Antonio, it got Anton psyched up because he was listening to Antonio, thinking, "Bloody hell, this guy." Is ready. This guy is on something else ahead of this game. Um, so it got it got yeah, it got Anton Ferdinand motivated just listening to Mikel Antonio speak about the game. So yeah, well, I, I think they've all come across like that. I think you know, Soufal, we don't know if he's gonna be uh playing as well. I think um Emerson gave a good interview, and I think Zuma gave a good interview as well. So um I don't think they're just saying this stuff. I I don't. I, I think they are really pumped. I just hope for Antonio's sake on here, if he he could go in pumped like that. I hope if he doesn't get the refereeing performance that he hopes for, he doesn't get too frustrated and start throwing himself around a bit. You know, I think he might have to, you know, tailor his game a little bit. You, you just, you never know. I, whilst I think they, that there's a level of incompetency in, in the Premier League referees, I think when you go, when you get the European referees, there's a real variance into how they officiate the game. I, I think you, you could get one could be very, very different from another. So he's going to have to read the room on that one. Um, but I'll tell you what, if he's going to let some things go, the referee, and let the game flow, then Antonio going to have a very, very good game. The, the, the referee is the referee that did the england Brazil friendly um, just last month. You wouldn't let Picard get away with murder. <laughs> Good it, was friend, it was a friendly, however, but Paquetta got away a lot of stuff um, against that referee. Um, this is, I just went and had a look. Thanks to, here we go. Robert said, Do you know if any Leverkusen players have a one yellow card away from suspension like us now? For those interested, Emerson and Paquetta for West Ham. If they get booked tonight, they miss next week. So Paquetta and Emerson are one yellow card away from a suspension. So I just had a little look at Leverkusen. There's one player that could get booked and miss next week. If you could pick any Leverkusen player to be suspended next week, who would it be? Wurtz. Him. Hey! Um, I knew you'd pick him, that's why. Yeah, yeah he's bloody good, isn't he? <laughs> um, Bruce said, let's be real, Leverkusen haven't come up against someone like Antonio. If Antonio doesn't know what he's doing, how will Leverkusen know what he's doing? That's right. David G said, I fear for us tonight, it could be really tough with our best 11. Missing Alvarez, Ariel and Bowen, they might put us to bed. 3-0 loss. I'm afraid. Oh, I'm fine. I hope not. Um, Carl, yeah, it's true. Um, there are two bookings. There's three yellow cards for European football. Um, Steve said a day in the sunbathing in Cape Verde. And then Whoa. it just spar the rest of the Hammer supporters out here. I like it. I wouldn't like it. <laughs> um, Hal says we need top control midfield. The low block could work in the scenario with Antonio Caduceus breaking when we get the chance. I, I agree. I think... Um, They've, they've, struggled, they've struggled against Stuttgart this season when I watched that game. I watched them play Stuttgart and they really struggled in that one. And then they drew 0-0 with Gladbach who sort of employed a low block against them. So there have been teams that have kept Leverkusen out playing a sort of defensive mode of football. Um, so it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting. Uh, Paul's looking for Antonio against Taz. It was Hulk yeah. Hogan against Andre Bit Giant. Nice. Who's 
Who's the, who's the giant? I guess Tar's a giant, isn't he, really? Because, uh, yeah, it's bigger. Andrew said everybody would say we would struggle with Sevilla and Leon. Look what happened. Why can't we give them a huge battle? To be fair, I think there was quite a, I think there was a similar level of confidence about Sevilla that, compared to today. I think yeah. there's been quite a... Yeah, no, I, 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 yeah, no, I would say people are confident today. I don't think people are saying we can't do this. I think people are saying we can. Yeah. There's a lot of optimism and I like it. Uh, Jack says every few months we have a performance out of nowhere. I'm so proud of. Last one was against Arsenal in December. Tonight we win again. Oh, I like that. Well, that's at the end of that. Tonight we win again. Ivan says, what about Gerd on the left of our back three? Yeah, I, I, I yeah. I, I, yes, I would say he was almost tailor-made for it, actually. Um, for that position. Yeah, I, I would not mind that at all. Yeah, I, I wouldn't either, because my biggest concern with Gerd is his sort of aerial ability or his timing of jumps and stuff. The Leverkusen aren't that side. Leverkusen aren't going to be bombarding us with crosses um, mm. tonight. So I wouldn't have too much concerns with a guard in the side. I would have somebody that's able to hit a 50, 60 yard pass from defence as well to find Antonio and Caduce on the on the run as well. So yeah, I would I wouldn't be against it. Um, Todd says I think we will lose one nil, but a home win even if it's penalties that define it. Yeah, I've got that feel. I think two one tonight, Todd, but I've got the same same thing. Um, Carl says, um, if I wasn't scared of what's going to happen, it wouldn't be West Ham. Yeah, of course. It's West Ham itis to, to, to be a little bit worried about that. Darren says, just hope we keep it tight and at worst take a 1 0 loss to beat them back at the ball. Leo says, we have a chance, but I think we will stay back and then go all out at home. I think I think we'll, we'll play defensive as well. But what I would say is, there's a couple of players who, who almost can't. That they'll, they'll try and do their job, but. It's all very well staying back and being defensive. It's going to be really hard to try and stop Antonio and Caduce running forward, and particularly Caduce travelling with the ball. Um, with, with him, we, we have a player who's capable of scoring, travelling with the ball and scoring an outrageous goal. We've also got... David Moyes can't tame Paqueta. He, he just can't. Um, don't get me wrong. I think he'll put in a shift. He'll make his tackles. He'll do his stuff, but he can't tame him. So he's not going to be able to stop him from looking and trying to look in there and trying to play that ball over. Uh, um, so, you know, even if David Moyes wants to keep it tight, we will have at least three players there who are completely inclined to attack. I don't think he's going to... If he plays Emerson on that left-hand side as well in a more advanced role, I don't think he's going to be able to stop him and Paqueta trying to do their stuff and their one-twos. So I, I do think there will always be an attacking outlet. Um, and, and, and the one good thing about... Well, it's not, it's not one good thing. There's many good things. But one of the things is... Labour Cousin wouldn't... They won't have lots of data on how Moyes is going to play today. They, they just won't. So today, we we really can't be that predictable. If he's going to go with what he did against Wolves, he's got half. He's got... what, what it, And possibly even less than that, because Bowen didn't get injured until a little way into this. So he's got... He's possibly got 30 minutes or something like that of data to look at. And um, we've got more. We know they've been playing all season. We've got their... Basically, their, their ex-top scout now works for West Ham. Um, so we got all... And, and he's, he's data-driven, by the way. Um, we've got our... Old mushy boy um, from Where the Brain Man. What's his name? Maximilian Hands. Oh, oh, Mr. Hands. All oh, hands on deck, right? Um, he's got all the data there as well. He and was, got... he was he was reading the Hammers chat LinkedIn yesterday. Was he? Was he really? <laughs> yeah, it comes up on my. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Well, to be fair, it's like it's his fault for having it as so that his own name. It. Yeah. Um. Yeah, because I, I screenshot it and I was going to send it to you. But, okay, cool. Uh, um, I'll just put it up on the screen. Max Millen Hans was checking out the old Hammers chat. Of course he was. He, you know, he's, he's, a, he's a collator of the data. And if he's going to do that, then... Um... Uh, I don't know if you can there you go. Of course he did. Go on, Maxi, baby. That's what you uh, want to do. Um, maybe he's going I'll, to pick up I'll, a ticket I'll, for I'll the Max, killer factory. Max, the handyman hands. Um, he collates his data. He's probably going to unsubscribe now if he's hearing all this thing. Well, that's it. He's again on about. But he's got the data and he used it later. <laughs> I don't, know, I don't know why I'm trying to rhyme stuff. But this is what I'm saying. We've got all this stuff. We've got um, Sufal. We've got Suchet. And they're all about their Czech contingent. I would suggest we we got more on them than they got on us. Yeah. Um, Maximilian Hahn has been checking out what Hammer's chat to think ahead of... Um... No, he knows. He'll be disappointed because I, I actually only post sort of like businessy stuff on there. So basically talk about how we're pretty good at promoting pube trimmers. Um, we are. We're bloody good, honestly. Um, honestly so... man. For anyone so, going tonight, mine are 
So I don't, I don't, I've got a flat top today. So I don't really put links to like videos up there. It's more like, hey, I've got a new brand deal, you know, that kind of thing to try and uh, attract more brand deals, essentially. But yeah, yeah well, yesterday it came up, Max Millen Han has viewed your profile. I was like, hello, Max. Hello. Hi, Max. Because quite often they'll come up, if you can click on who's viewed it, it'll be in the last week, six people that work at West Ham United with you, your profile. I'm like, who? Who are you? What are you wanting? Hey, what are you wanting? Karen Brady six times, probably. Well, I did. I replied to uh, Stephen Bartlett yesterday, the Diary of a CEO podcast. Some guy put up saying, like, basically everybody copies everybody, and he doesn't see a problem with that. So, so, so I said, oh well, that's. So I replied, well, actually, West Ham United copied our polo shirt design. I said, and the best thing about it is, about a month later, they copyrighted, striked our polo shirt, and got our Etsy shop shut down. So they copied. Yes. We had our polo yes. shirt on Etsy. West Ham copied it and copyright striked our polo shirt and our Etsy shop got shut. And I was like, hang on, how's that? How's that even like, how's that a thing? Our yeah. polo shirts existed for years. You've only just copied it and you've copyright striked us. They've copied us and hit us with a copyright strike mm. and we've lost our Etsy shop. Because and they of copied it. our Who Are You videos as well. Yeah. If, if only we had enough money to, to, oh, to, tell you what. to, to go after them and say, oh, you. Yeah. Let's do this. We've got proof. That I know, but if, to be fair, if I had that much money, I'd probably be over in Cape Verde. <laughs> and I wouldn't be suing West Ham. I'd be there with the, with the fellas. Our Etsy shop is closed down because West Ham copied our polo shirt and hit us with a copyright strike on our own polo shirt that we designed that they've copied. Um, okay. Yeah, it was, it was the one that you did. Yes. Yeah, Connor. Yeah. Years ago, years yes. ago, we brought out that polo shirt. Yeah. Uh, West Ham brought it out about a year ago because everybody messaged me like, uh, "I think they've copied you here," and it's identical. Then they hit us with a copyright strike. How's that fair? I don't, um, I don't know, I don't know. But um, <laughs> what, what can, what can you do? What can you do? You can't battle against those, uh, those big boys, can you? Um, yeah. That was a fundamental go. income stream for us to to yeah. reach oh, for new sure. people. For sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. How yeah, much yeah, subscribers yeah. go on our store? But people that are like looking for gifts for West Ham fans go on Etsy. We were, we were, our ranking was quite prominent on there. It's gone now, gone. Shops del- they being ranked us off, down. didn't they? They ranked us off. Um, so <laughs> anyway, right then. Um, so basically, we're going to launch a, a, a copyright claim on West Ham. We need everybody to get involved. But not really. Really. You never know. There might be like a solicitor that watches our stuff. So hold on. I'll do this one for you, boys. One of the six people. Uh, Rue's coming to the colour factory. Excellent, excellent. Um, he he's he's coming to the colour factory. Right. Anyway, shall we wrap up there, Gonzo? Yeah, right, mate. I've got to go up to London. You've got to go down to London. Yeah, I've got to get get going in a minute. Um, go decide if I'm wearing this t-shirt or not. It's a big decision. I'm on stage for the first time in my life. What do I wear? I've never really considered. I mean, I don't you've even wear spoken before. You've spoken before, events at the boats and stuff. You've, you've spoken before. Yeah, I know. You, you have, you have. You'll, you'll be fine. I know, but... Anyway, um, if you want to come and join us in the Colour Factory tonight, link's in the description below. Doors open at 5pm. Myself and... If you're coming to Hammers Chat bit, make sure you get a ticket by the Hammers Chat section. Myself and Gonz will be doing our piece around about 7pm for half an hour. Then we'll let the West Ham DJ pump the songs on throughout the venue, get us all in the mood and hyped up for that kickoff. Yeah, Cork, and hopefully we can be celebrating a good result for West Ham at the end of the evening. Anyway, Gonzo, I shall see you in a, a handful of hours. Yeah, looking forward to it, and I'll see you, you later and all. If you've enjoyed this video, please do drop a like on it by clicking thumbs up, subscribe to you to Hammers Chat, and if you want to pull the shirt, um, hammerschatstore.com. Catch you in a bit.